Okay, class. Today we're going to go over section 4.1, and the title of this section is called Probability. So many students feel that probability is probably too complicated to understand, but it really isn't. If you are shown examples and you're shown what the formula is, it should be pretty straightforward. So first we have to identify, like where, where would one encounter probability? In the real world, probability is seen and used in a lot of disciplines. So for example, you usually see it in the weather, right? When we predict rain, uh, hurricanes, hurricanes, um, not that we were seeing rain right here before, we were talking about rain, hurricanes, uh, snow, temperatures, right? You usually see that in that area, right? Uh, you also encounter it in the medical field. Uh, when you talk about your, you know, your generation, your genes, right? Maybe, maybe what's the probability that if your parents have diabetes, what's the probability that you're going to have diabetes? Or if you, if your grandpa had hair loss, what's the probability you're going to have hair loss? Or, you know, uh, twins running in the family. Um, babies, genes, drugs, illnesses, even death, right? Living or dying, death or living, right? Maybe your your one of your loved ones is dying from uh, an, an illness, right? What's the probability that they're gonna last a certain period? So we're gonna have that sad, but yeah, you can talk about that's where probabilities is at. Uh, economics. Right, we talk about stocks. Uh, the, the gas prices. Well, I guess everything in general, right? Cost of living. You name it, right? Economics. Um, but the one that really, a student really, really can grasp is gambling, right? And so when you talk about gambling, here's where you have a lot, a lot more to choose from. So you have lottery, uh, uh, both, right? The scratch offs and the numbers. I'm gonna put scratch. Scratch off for the numbers. Right, uh, slot machines, uh, poker, uh, roulette, uh, the one with the dice, it's called craps, blackjack, jack, right, blackjack. Um, I don't know either what other games there are besides those. Um, Sunset, Loteria, <laughs> with, the, with the beans. Lotteria, sure, you can use the beans. You know, if you used to use uh, alcohol, whoever lost, that's a dream. Anyways, that's, that's going beyond, right? But the gambling part, you, you all, Play cards or roll the dice. Play games. Any games? Any 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 uh, board games uh, require uh, some sort of probability. So all of this, all of this, 
all revolve around this thing called probability. And so you're figuring out on the gambling part, what's the chances of you winning and what's the chances of you losing? That's, that's how the game goes. So the probability formula There's a formula for it. It's pretty simple. It is simply parts over total. It's a ratio of the parts over the total. And so what you would have to do is either you have choices. Either you can reduce it. You can reduce the fraction. Three ways you can do it. Reduce it. You can convert it into a decimal. Or you can convert to a percentage. So you have, either, you have whatever you like, you make the call. Usually, usually we choose the percentage. That, that makes it pretty, uh, more, I guess, prettier, I guess. It looks more natural to see it as a percentage. So yeah, you, you get to choose, but I, I like percentage. That, that looks sharper than the other ones. All right, so we're gonna use, we're gonna use this part to a total. So I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna choose a game. Uh, I'm gonna choose a game of craps. So craps, is a game where you know you see it in, in the James Bond movies, right? They have this table and they roll a pair of dice, and that's a very uh, interesting game uh, because there are games within game. It's a game within a game, right? So your goal, your goal when you roll your dice is you you bet. On the first level, you have there's two levels, right? So the first level that you uh, you play is you roll your dice, and your goal for level number one is to get a sum of your dice to add up to a seven, or it adds up to an eleven. That's for level one. So if you if the sum of the dice adds up to seven or eleven, you win. But let's say that you don't, right? If you don't land or 7-Eleven, then you get to choose, hey, do you want to go to the next round? You want to go to level the next level, level two? If that's the case, then whatever die you rolled, the sum of it, if it ended up being an eight, right? On the first roll, right? And you want to play for the next level. The next level says that you have to roll your die and you have to get a sum of eight. It doesn't matter how you get the sum of eight, but it has to equal eight. That's how it works. All right. So let's 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 list let's list um, the outcomes. So before I do that, let's let's talk about some of the definitions that we are going to encounter when we talk about probability. So I'm gonna go to my book and we're gonna look on the uh, terms. So there's some terms that we have to explore and here they are. Okay, so there's, there's three of them. So event, what is an event? So an event is any collection of results or outcomes of a procedure. That's what we're going to do with the, with the craps. We're going to list all of the results of what happens when you roll a pair of dice. All of them, all the different scenarios. We're going to list them all. And then a simple event is an outcome or an event that cannot be further broken down into simpler components. So once you break down the event, you know, the rolling of the die, you can, there's only two dice and you can list all the samples. There isn't much that you all you what else you can do with it. It's just that, right? And then the sample space for a procedure consists of all possible simple events. So that's just the list 
of all of the events that can occur. So you have an event, a simple event, and you have a sample space. Okay, so let's let's do let's let's demonstrate the sample space, all of the different possibilities that can occur when you roll a pair of dice. So rolling a pair of dice, and I want to list all of the different outcomes that can occur when I roll uh, my pair of dice. So notice I have a beige one and I have a brown, uh, I guess it's a ivory one, right? Ivory and a brown die to indicate, all right, dice number one is the ivory, dice number two is the brown. So we're going to list the sample space. Listing uh, sample space. of all of the different outcomes of rolling a pair of dice. All right, so, so first thing that can happen, one, one, one of the first occurrences that can happen when you roll a die is you get you get this you get a one on one or one on one All right so I'm gonna label one dash one the first this is the the uh, observation from the top right of the ivory and then the brown is a one so there's one one you can also have a one two one, two, there's a one, two, you can get one, three, one, four, one, five, and one, six. Not one, six, right? Left is ivory, brown is the right. Right. Or you can get, you can roll a 2-1, two 2-1, one, two one, a 2-2, two 2-3, two, two I don't know where the 4 is, there's a 4, 2-4, 2-4, and two six. And you repeat the you repeat the cycle, right? You can get three one, three two, right? So three one, three two, three three, three four, three five, three six, four one, four two, four three, four four, four five, four six, five one, five two, five. Three, F five, four, five, 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 six, six, one, six, two, six, three, six, four, six, five, and a six, six. You can see it. Six, six. Left is ivory, brown is right. Six, six. All right. So this. These are all the different possibilities that can occur when you roll a paradigm. Let's see if I can get a setup. Ah, I got six. I better not go to Las Vegas. All right, so these are the different, these are the different possibilities, right? All of them, how many are there? There is a total of how many different possibilities? Well, there's, one, two, three, there's six columns and there's six rows. So there is a total of 36 outcomes. When you roll a pair of dice, right? Now, going back to the game of craps, right? So for level one, for level one, you must roll 
when you roll, when you roll a pair, the pair, the pair of dice, I believe it's red and blue in Las Vegas. The sum of the two dice must sum to seven or 11. That's level one. So let's circle, let's circle all of the ones that sum up to seven or an 11. All right, so this one adds up to seven. One plus six is seven. Two plus five is seven. Three and four, seven, four and three. Five to two, six to one. And then now I gotta get the 11s. Six and five, five and six. So what's the probability of me winning? So we write P parentheses win. And you put, remember, recall the formula. It's parts over total. So my total was 36, right? And let's count how many did I circle that added up to seven or 11. One, there's six, seven, eight. So there's eight. There are a total of eight that were winners. So if I divide eight by 36, reduce it, I get two nights. In decimal, that is equal to 0 0.2222222, uh, two's repeat. In percentage, that would equate to 22.2%. Okay. Okay. So that is the probability of you winning in level one. A 22.2% chance of winning. Now, if you compare this game with all the other ones that we listed, you will see that the game of craps, you have better odds of winning than you do the other one. So there's your total, and there's your part. Change it to decimal, change, oh, sorry, change it to a fraction, reduce, decimal, and percent. Now, in, in the probability section or chapter, uh, the rounding rules suggest, or they require us, to round, round decimal to three places behind. And if you have it in percentage, round percentage to one tenth. Of a percent. Sorry, the tenth to the tenth to the tenth of a percent. So this one's correct. They want it you they want you to write it in that format. Decimal, right? This one we need to change it. They want it in three, which means I want it written. Like that, 0 0.223. I want three places behind the decimal. Uh, this one was round percentage to the 10th. If you want it in fraction, it's got to be reduced. Usually, we don't usually have it written like that often. They usually have it written in this, these formats. It's supposed to be a three. And that's a 10. So that's how they want you to write a percentage. Now, someone was asking me about level two. All right, so level two, the odds just change dramatically, right? So, uh, so if you get an eight, you roll an eight, right? 
and you want to go to uh, the level two, right? You get me? You want to do level two. You didn't win in level one, so you have to go to level two. And the the house will ask you, "Hey, you want to go ahead and play level two? And you say, "Yeah, all right. Give me your twenty bucks, right? Or or not? You can you can withdraw, right? But if you say, "Yeah, I want to go ahead and do level two, all right. So you got an eight. So what's the probability that when you roll, you have to get an eight, right? So eight. So you circle the ones that sum up to eight. Uh, that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, that's five. There's only five. So you have five, five out of 36 to win, which you can see if you do five out of 36, your uh, odds decreased. Five out of 36 and it ends up being 0 0.139. 0.139. So your 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 odds of winning drop because you went to the next level. All right. So that's just giving you a scenario of how to create a sample space. And based off of your sample space, you can determine the probability. So that's how you write a probability. You write P and then what your outcome is. You want to win or lose. Now notice I did win. We can figure out the probability of losing. So if probability winning was two nines or 0 0.222 or 22.8, what's the probability of me losing? Well, if I do partial or total, that would be 36. And then I would go ahead and add up all the ones that were not circled. So out of the 36, there were eight of them that were winners, but the other ones were losers. So all you do is you subtract 36 minus eight. And that give, gave us 28. So the probability of losing in level one then becomes 0. 0.778 or 77.8% or of losing. That's just losing. So winning is 22%, 22.2%. Losing is 77.8%. Okay, good odds, good odds. All right, so let's look, let's look at more, let's look at some more, more uh, um, notation that you get to encounter uh, when you deal with uh, percentages. All right, so let's go back to our book and let's look at some of the uh, the notation that you're gonna encounter. All right, so I don't see it here, but it's supposed to be here. All right, so um, I don't see it. I think they took it off. Okay, so I'll have to, oh, there it is, there it is. Uh, notation for probability. Okay, so uh, notation for probabilities. Uh, we use a capital P, like I showed you, capital P denotes a probability, and we use capital letters A, B, and C to denote a specific event. In our case, it was win. And then you write it as a capital P parentheses, and you put the event inside, just like we did here. P parentheses win or P parentheses lose. That means the probability of losing occurring, probability of winning occurring. So those are the those are the notations that we're going to be using to denote probability. And if you look at the scale, there is a scale as to how probability works. So when you convert them into decimals, uh, this is a scale for when you convert a, pr a probability into decimal. If you get a one, that is certainly going to happen. Am I going to let you out early today? No, that's unlikely. That's impossible. Unlikely. Uh, tomorrow is, I don't know, tomorrow is the next day. Well, well, tomorrow is going to be hot. Huh, certain. Or that's going to definitely happen. Right? Tomorrow will be another day. 
certainly going to happen. And then in the middle is 50 50. Right? It could happen, it could not happen. So that's the scale. All probabilities, all probability, if they convert it to decimal, would fall in between those two numbers one at the top, zero at the bottom, always. You cannot have anything beyond a one. And you cannot have anything below zero. It has to be all probabilities fall within, within zero and one. That's always. Always. All right. So let's let's talk about other 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 sample spaces. And we'll do we'll do some simple ones. So and I'll show you some trends that can. That you and there's pattern to them. You can see the patterns when you when you deal with probability. So let's list some more listing more sample spaces. All right. So uh, let's suppose that a couple plans to have. Three children. What are what are the genders of the three children that can occur? That the couple could have. So they can have two extremes, right? They can have boy, 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 or they're all girls, right? Which one's better, having all boys or having all girls? Mm. Me, I think having all girls, that's very expensive. Yeah, boys can eat whatever, right? They can eat dirt, whatever. All right, so those are the two straightforward. They can all have the same, all. All three children can be all of the same genders. Like either all boys, straight boys, or all straight girls. Or they could have boy, boy, girl. First born is a boy, second born is a boy, third is a girl. So order doesn't matter. Or they could have B boy, girl, boy. They could have boy, girl, girl. Right? First born, second born, third born. Or you can have girl, boy, boy, girl, boy, girl, uh, or um, girl, girl, boy. I have to think about that one. So those are your those are your different possibilities. There are how many? One. There's eight. There are eight different possibilities that can occur gender-wise of this couple having three kids. They can have one of those. So there's a total of eight possibilities. Another one, simple one uh, example, is the old famous flip of a coin. Right. So if if we flip, if I, if there's my heads. No, oh, that this is heads. I think that's heads and that's tails. All right. I flip a coin. It's not a big coin. It's a it's a it's a coin. Right. So if I flip one coin, what are the outcomes? Well, either you get heads or tails. That's it. Heads or tails. Okay. Yeah, two outcomes. What happens if you flip two coins? Well, you could have heads, heads. You can have tails, tails. You can have heads, tails. Or tails heads. We have four outcomes. Ah, right. So I don't have another 
I don't have another coin. Yeah, I do have another coin. I have two coins. Oh, I got nine. So I got two dimes. I, I flip. So when you flip them, you can get heads, tails, heads, tails. You can get two heads. You get two tails, or or the first one's tails and the second one's heads, right? So that's that's why you have four. What happens if you flip three coins? Well, if I throw in another coin, you could have all heads, you can have all tails, you can have heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, heads, 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 tails, or you can get tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, or tails, tails, heads. So how did I know that I was going to get two outcomes here? How did I know that there were going to be four outcomes here? And how did I know that there were going to be eight outcomes? Right. So the way it works is this is how it works. So when you flip one coin, how many sides does that one coin have? Well, it's got two, two sides, heads and tails. That's how that is produced. See, there are two sides. All right. For the next one, I have two coins. Right? Each coin has how many sides? It's got two sides. The first coin has two sides. The second coin has two sides. Guess what you do with the two numbers? That's right. You multiply them. Bam! That's how you get four outcomes. This one you have three coins. Three coins. Each coin has two sides. Mashed potatoes and green beans. Just kidding. All right. Two sides, guess what you do with the numbers of each of the coins? Multiply them, bam, you get eight, eight outcomes. So learn, knowing that, knowing that, if I were to flip four coins, four coins, you flip four coins, how many outcomes are you going to have if you were to flip four coins? Flip four coins, right? Well, let's. We don't have to list them like we did before. I can figure out what that total is, right? So because I have four separate coins and each coin has two sides, I wrote on the edge. Sorry, two sides, two sides, and I multiply them. I end up getting 16 outcomes, right? So you're, what you're doing is you're multiplying the amount of items that you have times the amount of sides or options that you have per item. In this case, each coin, each of those four coins has two sides and you multiply them. And that's how you get the number of outcomes. Now you could, you could, you could list all of the different sample spaces like we did here. These are your sample spaces. You could, well, I know, I know, I know two for sure. I know heads, I'm sorry. Yeah, heads, 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 heads. And I know tails, 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 tails. Well, you just gotta find me the other 14. You could do it, it'll take time, but you'll see that you will get a total of 16 outcomes. So that's a trick with, with probabilities. All right, so let's summarize. Do you remember what is the formula for probability? Probability formula is parts 
over total. Remember, either you reduce, convert to decimal, round to three, down to three places, or convert to percentage. Jump the gun, I was gonna put PERT. Round to the 10th of a percent. Well, let's look at, let's do some of the examples in the book so you can see how, how it works, All right? But before that, let's, let's go through, let's go through some of the rules of probability. There are some rules that correspond to probability. Okay, so rules of probability. All right, so rules of probability, all right? So let's look at some of the rules. All right, so the first rule is called the relative Frequency approximation. Okay. The definition of that says you conduct, conduct a procedure. and count the number of times that event A actually occurs. So this rule, I'm gonna show you and demonstrate a rule, what happens for this rule. I'm trying to find a bottle. I don't think I have a bottle. Let me see, I think I have a bottle. I shouldn't have a bottle, but let's see. Let me get a bottle. So here's my, here's my bottle of water, right? Now, if I throw this bottle up in the air and I count, I count the number of times it lands on its bottom, right? I throw it, I keep throwing and see how it lands. Will it land standing up? What do you think? Probably not. Maybe in a rare occasion it might, but it's unlikely that it's going to stand up. Right? Why? Well, for one, the bottle is not symmetrical. It's not the same on all sides, right? It's all different. The, the length is longer than the width. So 
and then plus there's liquid inside. So the probability that it lands is not going to happen often. This one's kind of like the like the lottery, right? You have a chance. You have a chance. There is a chance. There is a chance that it can occur. But most often it won't. Will not. Most often. It will not. That's the lottery. You have a chance that you can win, but you're not going. You're just donating to education, right? That's what the lottery is for. That's what they say, right? So it it, it probably won't happen. Right? Because again, things are not equally likely that the sides are not the same. You have liquid inside. You have different factors that impact the probability of it occurring, right? So that's that's the relative frequency. <clears throat> Next rule <clears throat> is called the classical approach. Classical approach to probability. Right, so the definition of that one, classical. Uh, it says it requires equally likely outcome. Right, so like a die, a die has all of the sides that are the same. Someone told me in my other class, hey, wait a minute, sir, they're not all the same. Doesn't the holes on the sides impact the way it lands? No, it does not. So the definition of it is, assume that a given procedure has n simple events and that each of those simple events has an equal chance of occurring. Assume that a given procedure has n different simple events. And that each of those simple events has an equal chance I hate it when I write on the edge of the paper. There's a paper underneath it. Has an equal chance of occurring. Kind of like a die. That single for die, sorry, that's a die, right? Or gender of a child, boy, girl, uh, a coin, heads, tails, okay. All of those have uh, equal chance of occurring, right? You can see that 
guys have six sides. Six sides. So that's the that's the classical approach to uh, probability. All the sides are equally likely to occur. And then you have the last one. The last one's called the uh, subjective probability. Subjective probability. Uh, yes. We call this one guesstimation. 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 All right. Uh, we they use the probability. Is estimated by using knowledge of the relevant 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 Relevant, relevant circumstance. What is it? Uh, relevant circumstance. So they're estimated, estimated. Where do you see that? You see it in the final problem news every day. Every day they use guesstimation and they get paid what? 100,000 minimum, 100,000? And they get it wrong and they still get paid 100,000? Right? Weather forecasters, right? Weather forecaster. And wouldn't it be nice? You can be wrong and you still get paid thousands of dollars. But they say they say, oh, the chance of rain is 10%. All right. What does that mean? What does that mean? 10% chance of rain. Well, did you know that every station has a different interpretation of what 10% chance of rain means? So in one station, in one station. They say that 10% means 10% of the viewing area will get some rain event. You flip to the next station on TV, that 10% means if you look at cloud cover, humidity, barometric pressure, cloud cover, uh, temperature, 10% of the 10% of the time it rains under those specific conditions. And you turn to another station, Calavision, they base it on whether the chicken was crowing uh, late at night or a grandma's arthritis is acting up. It may rain. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go with the uh, Calavision. I'm going to go with that one. That's what 10%. But yeah, you can, you can, you can see that every, every station has a different interpretation of what that 10% means. And of course, they're, they're just estimates. Lesson. All right, so let's look at let's look at some examples from the textbook. Right. You got to remember again, probability. I keep I keep reminding you, probability equals parts over total. Remember that. Glue it to your brain. Probability equals parts over total. All right, go to the exercises in the book. 
And let's look at some of the examples. All right, so let's see. Uh, some examples. Okay, here's one. Example number three. All right, so how many of y'all like skydiving? How many of y'all ever been skydiving? How many of y'all would like to skydive? I would not. I, I would not. The chance, I have, I have so much. I mean, I've, you got to have luck. I, I don't. I don't have luck. I don't have luck. Anyways, I, that's why I don't. I don't. All right, so in a recent year, there were about 3 million skydiving jumps. And out of those 3 million, 21 of them resulted in death. Uh, we use the relative frequency approach and follow. So again, so here's look. Let's look for your part and your total. So our part would be our twenty-one, and our total is our three million. Right. So notice, notice there was an error in the book. Right. There's an error in this column. It's supposed to be three million. Look, they added an extra zero. Oops. Anyways, so yeah, if you type in twenty-one. 21 over 3 million, you get 0 0.0000007. Did I say too many zero? 0 0.0000007. That's what my calculator says, I think. Let me double check. I'm going to try my calculator. So 21, let's see if it works. Because uh, this time it doesn't work. 21 over 3 million. It gave me uh, zero, 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 right? So he was right. All right, now, remember the rules. Remember the rules of probability. Either you leave it in fraction format. Well, if you do, I believe 21 over four, 3 million ends up being uh -oh, 21 over 3 million. <laughs> it didn't give it to me. Uh, it would be seven, <laughs> 7 over a million. Yeah, 7 over a million. Right. Or if you want to write it in, in decimal, Remember, in decimal, it came out to be 0 0.12345 and a 7. Now, notice, remember the rule says you have to round it off to three places behind the decimal. Notice, notice all three and the number after it is 0, which means this answer becomes zero. No. All right. So the rule is if you have a law, a very small number, and you round it and it ends up being zero, but yet you have digits that are non zero at the very end, you're going to write your answer as zero plus. This means that the number is very, very, very small. Not zero, but it's very small. Very, very small number. It's not zero. If it were zero, straight zero, then all of these digits have to be zero. That seven prevents it from being zero. So anything beyond the, the fourth, fifth digit that's not non-zero, you're going to put zero plus. Don't forget. So in the back of the book, if you see a zero plus, that means the number was very, very, very small. All right, so you can't change it to a, a percentage, so that's how it's written in decimal format. Okay. Uh, example number four, three children of the same gender. All right, so going back to our data where this couple wants to have three children and you were supposed to list all the different genders of all three children that they can have. Notice that there are eight of them. We did it before. B B B B B G B B B. 
We <laughs> looked at them all. Right. And oh, I have it here. Wait, I have it here in my notes. We did it. We did it earlier. There they are, right? We listed them all. And example number four says, what's the probability that this couple has all three children with the same gender? Well, our total is eight. And they wanna know what's the probability that the children are all of the same gender? Well, there's two of them. So that would be two over eight. And if we divide it out, that would be one fourth, which gives us 0 0.25, which ends up being 25%. And you don't have to put the zero. That would be it. That's, that's, that was example number four in your book. Then they have it there, see? Two out of eight, the BDB, GDG, reduce one fourth or 0.25 or 25%. We're going to skip number five because we don't think we have any Katy Perry fans. All right, let's look at number six. So number six um, is texting and driving. How many of y'all text and drive? I do not. I text and uh, drive and eat, not text and eat. I drive and eat. Now, how does one eat a bean and cheese taco on a stick shift automobile? It's talent, very talented. All right, so in a study of US high school drivers, it was found that 3,785 text, text, texted while driving during the previous 30 days. And 4,720 did not text while driving during the same time period. Based on these results, if a high school driver is randomly selected, find the probability that he or she texted while driving during the previous 30 days. Now, notice this one, we need to figure out the parts in the total. Well, they don't give us a total. They gave us the count of the ones that text, and they gave us the count of the ones that did not, which means I have to figure out the total on my own. So what do I do with those two numbers? Well, I have to add those two numbers, the 3,785 3, plus the 4720, add them together, and that would give us our total. And they're asking us to find the probability that he or she texts while driving. So if I have the 8,505, 8, that was the total, what number do I put in the top? Well, they want the number of drivers who text, which means you're going to put the 3,785 divided by the grand total, 8505, that equates to 0.445. If you want to put it in percentage, that would be 44.5%. All right, so remember, all probabilities fall between zero and one. If you recall, all of the numbers that we got is a number that fell between zero and one. 0.445 is probably close to the 0 0.5, 0 0.5 on, the, on the scale, right? So remember that, so probability. So if a year is randomly selected at random, find the probability that Thanksgiving Day in the United States will fall on a Wednesday. Well, that ain't gonna happen. That's why it's zero. What's the probability that Thanksgiving falls on a Thursday? Well, that has to be one because it always occurs on Thursday. All right, and then we have compliments. All right, so compliments. Compliment does not mean what beautiful shoes you're wearing, sir. What a beautiful dress you're wearing, sir. Mentary events. Complimentary events. All right, so I'm going to give you the formal definition, and I'll tell you what 
it means in English. So sometimes we need to find the probability that an event A does not occur. So a complement is the event where A does not occur. So definition of complement, complement of event A, we denote it with a bar on top of the event. In this case, A, you put a bar on top of it, that means not A. So as an example, here's one example. So suppose, so sorry, so probability of A, probability of A occurring occurring and the probability of A with a bar on top is probability of A not occurring. So as an example, so on the news today, they said the probability of rain for Tuesday was 40%. All right, what is the probability of with a line on top of it? What does that mean? That means it's not going to rain. So 40 means it's going to rain. With the line means it's not going to rain. How do we figure that out? Right. So what you do is you, you subtract 1 minus the probability of A that it does occur. So in this case, you would do, well, it's not 40. 100%, uh, sorry. You can do it two ways. If if your percentage, if your if your probability is written in percentage, you would have to you would have to subtract from a hundred percent. So it'll be a hundred percent minus probability of A. So 100% minus 40%, that would give us our 60%. So there's a 60% chance that it does not rain. And notice if you add does and does not, those equal to 100%. Right? That's if it's written in percentage. So this is the formula. That is the formula for uh, complements. It's the probability of A not equal to 100% minus probability of A, if it's in decimal, I mean, I'm sorry, in percentage. That's the formula. If it's written in percentage, this is the formula that you would use. If that's percentage, my answer should be in percentage. So you subtract it from 100. But if it's written in decimal format, let's say, what's the probability that I pass exam number two in Mr. Guerra's class? Well, it is 0. 0.65, 0. 0.65, right? Pass exam number two, probability of not pass. Exam number two, I'll put the line. So because this is written in decimal format, you are going to do one minus the probability of A. So you would do one minus 0. 0.65 
gives you 0.35. So if it's in decimal format, the formula is the probability of not A is equal to one minus the probability of A if it's in decimal form. So you subtract it from 100 if it's in percentage, you subtract it from one if it's in decimal. Those are the two formulas. All right, now we're ready to do the exercises in the Libro. All right, so we're gonna to go to the book. We're gonna do we're gonna do two problems. These are easy. Just remember parts of a total. Okay, so let's do actually we'll do two of them. Uh, we'll do twenty-five on page. Um, what page is it on? One forty-four. Okay, so page one forty-four. Number 25. All right, so uh, XSort gender selection. So micro sorts XSort gender selection technique was designed to increase the likelihood that a baby will be a girl. At one point before clinical trials of the XSort gender selection technique were discontinued, 945 births consisted of 879 baby girls and 66 baby boys. Uh, based on these results, what's the probability of a girl born to a couple using the micro sort X sort method? Now, this this book was written in 2005. So back then, they were genetically modifying the 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 egg and the sperm uh, to increase the likelihood of uh, kids being a certain gender. Well, now it's gone beyond that. You can now manipulate and genetically modify the genes so that you can choose if you want your child to be athletic, you want them to be smart, you want a different eye color, what kind of hair do they want you want them to be? You want them to be uh, big, skinny, you name it. You can modify how your child is going to be, but there is a catch. Unfortunately, if by altering the genes, you decrease their lifespan. So their lifespan gets cut by 20%. So not good. Hey, whatever the baby comes out, whatever genes, leave it like that. You don't have to modify them. But hey, you can do it for a price. And it's very expensive, very expensive by doing that. All right, so remember, Parts over total. So they want they want the probability of a girl. All right. So probability of a girl. So what's the part and what's the total? All right. So let's see. Do we know what the total number of births there were? Yeah. 945 is the total. We don't have to add them. They added them for us. And what do I put on the top of the 945? Is it the 879 or the 66? Well, they want the probability of a girl being born. So we want the girl count. So we're gonna put the 879 on top of the 945. And we are going to divide 879 over 945. And I'm going to change it to a decimal. And then I'll convert it into a percentage. Oh, there's a zero. So I can just leave that as 93%. So it looks like this uh, this technique 
is effective. Wow, 93%. 93%. Interesting. 93% effective. This is whatever they're doing, it should be working. Or not, right? Okay, so that's 25. Uh, 27. Gregory Mendel. How many of y'all are familiar with Gregory Mendel? Gregory Mendel is the is the I guess the founder of genetically modifying genes. Thank him for Takis. Thank him for hot Cheetos. Thank him for genetically modifying things. He is the owner, the main man for genetically modifying genetics. All right, so he experimented with uh, peas. So when Mendel conducted his famous genetic experiments with peas, one sample of offspring consisted of 428 green peas and 152 yellow peas. They want to know, based on those results, what estimate the probability of getting an offspring pea that is green? Now, okay, so they want the probability of green. So remember our formula, parts of the total. So what is the total? Well, it's not like 25 where they gave us a total. They gave us the count for the green peas and they gave us a count for the yellow peas. So guess what we have to do with both of those numbers? That's right, we have to add them. Add them together and that will give us our grand total of 580. So what goes on top? What are we trying to find the probability of? Are we trying to find the probability of the green or the yellow? Apparently it says the probability of getting an offspring that is green. So I'm going to put this 428 on top of the 580 that I got for the total. And I'm going to, I guess, convert it to a decimal and then convert it to a percentage. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to divide 428. I'm dividing 428. 580, 420 divided by 580, I get 0 0.73, 0 0.73793103434. I'm going to round it to three. So that nine is going to convert that second seven to an eight. So it should be 0 0.738. 738. And I'm going to convert it to a percentage so that equates to be 73.8%. Again, parts over total. All right, last one, let's do 28. 28 is in percent. All right, so let's look at 28. So 28 says, on the first date, Kelly and Mike, at, Kelly asked Mike to guess the date Guess the date of her birth, not including the year. Good news, Jack. What is the probability that Mike will guess correctly? All right. So what's the probability of Mike guessing Kelly's birthday? Ignoring leap years. All right. Some students say it's 12 out of 365. Nope. Not 12 out of 365. That means, that means she has 12 birthdays. She's schizophrenic or something. She can't have two birthdays. She's not going to want to date her no more. She only has one birthday. So the probability of guessing her birth date is one out of 365. Yeah, you only have one birthday. Hello, one birthday. One out of 365. We're not going to change it that so I'm going to see it in that format. All right, B, would it be unlikely for him to guess correctly on his first try? Yeah, one out of 365, yes, definitely. Uh, C, if you were Kelly and Mike did guess correctly on his first try, would you believe his claim that he made a lucky guess or would you be convinced that he had already known when she was born? I'm going to go ahead and just say he's a stalker. No, she he already knew. He knew already. I mean, you have social media. Don't don't y'all put your birthdays on there. He probably looked it up, looked her up, and knew when her birthday was, right? 
seen you already. And D. If Kelly asks Mike to get straight and Mike's guess is too high by 15 years, what's the probability that Mike and Kelly will have a second date? No, I don't think that's going to I don't think that's going to happen. He's gonna get he's gonna get slapped. <laughs> yep. Nope. Oops. Did wrong. Not gonna happen. Not going to have a second date. All right. 